and welcome to a living mind. My name is Noel Fogelman. My guest this week is David Lasher. Now David's basically Mr. 90s, having starred on Nickelodeon's Hey Dude, playing Ted, talk about that show. From there, he went on to a recurring role on Beverly Hills 90210, playing Kyle Connors, went to Blossom, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and basically guest starred on every 90s show out there. But now he is hosting his own podcast with Christine Taylor, who was on Hey Dude as well, called Hey Dude, the 90s Club. Very awesome podcast. They do a lot of interviews with people who are influential in the 90s. And this coming weekend, him and Christine, along with the Hey Dude cast and many other people from the 90s, will be in Hartford, Connecticut for 90s Con. It is Friday through Sunday. Check it out. But David, really nice guy. I enjoy my conversation with him, and I hope you do as well. So, David, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So you're on my podcast and podcasts are obviously huge. Everyone has one now. And you and uh, Christine Taylor, your co-host from Hey Dude, have one Hey Dude, the 90s call, which I absolutely love. It is it is such a fun podcast to you know, reminisce about, you know, the good old times of the 90s, which I can't believe it's 30 years ago already. But let's not age ourselves. But <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. How did you decide to get into the, the podcast space? I'm a huge podcast listener. You know, I've been listening to podcasts, you know, for years. And then, um, oh, you know what? I <clears throat> I was asked to come on Jenny Garth and Tori Spelling's 9021OMG podcast to kind of relook back at my episodes on 90210. And um, we had a, such a great time. <clears throat> And then Tori ha- couldn't make one episode, so Jenny asked me to co-host with her. And then iHeart, their producer, Amy Sugarman, asked me, they have a, a, I forget what it was, it was some like men's health, fitness kind of podcast. They asked me to host it one week, and uh, and I just loved it. I mean, I'm a huge fan of like deep dive interviews, you know, it's it's a lot more interesting to me than you know a 10 minute tonight show interview where you know everyone has a planned joke and you don't really get you don't really get to know the person uh in a real way so then um amy sugarman and i uh came up with this idea of you know there's so many look backs on shows which to me, like, I didn't want to do a look back on Sabrina or Blossom, uh, you know, or even Hey Dude, uh, because it's very limiting. All you're looking back on is that one show, and and then it's finite, right? When you run out of episodes, the show's over. So I thought, look back on a decade, and I saw all this 90s nostalgia going on. Um, even my Even my kids are fascinated by the 90s, and people our age are – so nostalgic for it. It was like the last time before all the distractions, you know, of smartphones and social media, everyone sort of like enjoyed the culture together. Um, So we came up with, you know, uh, the launching, the launching off point would have been uh, uh, our core Hey Dude audience, because that's where Christine and I met. And, uh, but then, we are looking back on the, the the decade of the 90s and talking to anyone that made a mark in that decade. And it's like, you know, the 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 number of guests are just there's there's no limit to who we could talk to. It's really amazing. Yeah. And you can go basically any way in that podcast, you know, musicians, authors, you know, just celebrities just for being celebrities. I mean, it's it's definitely um, open ended. I guess the only two shows you can really do is like Law and Order or The Simpsons because there's nine million episodes of both. But you know, but uh, right. other than that, it's pretty <laughs> limited to where you, where you can go. But and you've interviewed a ton of people so far. Have you had someone who's kind of like your like white whale that you want to get on the show? 
Well, we're getting now we're getting people that uh that just say yes, you know, like wish list type people. But like we had Bonnie Hunt on the other day and right. she was my gosh, she's like one of the greatest actresses, writers, directors, um Second City. She had amazing stories. And we have yeah, we have two guests coming up. I probably can't say right now, but yeah, they're total whales that it took, you know, maybe a year to book. But now I think, you know, Christine said the other day on the show that uh, Mikey Day from SNL okay. texted Ben, her husband, saying that we're huge fans of your wife's podcast here at the show. So just like to think that like the SNL performers are listening to the podcast is so cool. And I think people inside our, our, our industry are loving the podcast. Um, and now it's about getting just amazing guests and doing interesting interviews, you know, and, uh, and growing our social media and trying to get, get the show out there. It's crazy. Like you mentioned, it took like a year in the making to get some of these guests, how like hard it is to kind of like, rain these got people in and then finally you get them because i've had that a lot i've been doing this for over seven years now where it sometimes took me four years to get a guest where you you lock it in and then something <laughs> happens and then you have to do it again you jump through so many hoops but just the day and age now that like any schmo like myself now can reach out to you guys and have them on like my show and it, it's just great now how like um i mean social media is is good and bad just how connected we are now how how easy it is as opposed to the 90s when you know we didn't have any of this and like you guys were kind of like i want to say mythical characters but like you know the actors when you were on 902 and all those actors it was you know really hard to like you know feel like there was a close connection well now it's like you know super easy to just reach out to you guys and kind of have conversations yeah yeah it's a great uh form of entertainment i think think yeah and the you know the 90s uh, con which is uh march 15th to the 17th is in hartford connecticut um you, you christine a lot of the hey dude cast as well as step by step boy meets world i think gina davis is going to be there um a lot of other uh, oh yeah gina davis and susan sarandon are doing um a uh, thumb and louise yeah reunion there yeah so yeah susan sarandon was at the new york comic con in um October, so there was a long line for her there. She kind of has her own like separate booth, kind of closed off, so <laughs> so no one really sees her. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I I've I've never done it, but it seems very uh, it, it seems very popular and very well organized. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, you see my shirt, the, the Hey Dude, um, which was one of Nickelodeon's first uh, scripted shows. I think out of control before that, or with like Dave Coulier from Full House had a show like in the late eighties, which was a kind of like a cool variety show. Um, how did, how did that come about? Um, and just talk about just the whole production about it, you know, being in Tucson, you know, kind of away from your family and everything. Um, well, I, 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 I started acting, you know, in New York, uh, doing theater and then started doing commercials <clears throat> And Hey Dude was just like another audition. You know, I would I would go from my high school to the train into the city, run around on auditions. It was fun. I really, you know, I, the process of just going on the auditions was fun for me. I really wasn't like so uh, caught up in if I got things. Or, uh, I had done a pilot for NBC the year before I got Hey Dude called Down Delaware Road. Um, it didn't go to series. And then I tested for who's the boss to play uh, Alyssa Milano's boyfriend. They flew me to L.A. I did not get that. And then the Hey Dude audition was, you know, at 1515 Broadway um, at their offices in New York. And, yeah, it went well. And I moved to uh, Tucson, Arizona to start shooting that. My junior, it was the uh, end of my junior year of high school. Okay. So while you were there, did you have to do, you know, schooling? Yeah, we had a company called On Location Education, and uh, 
I would have to do three hours of school every every day. Like the show, was it like not an air condition? It was just like the one office that had air conditioning. So how like was it difficult to kind of concentrate with being so hot out there? Or the trailers, you know, air conditioned? I, I you know, I remember there was a room at the hotel that we would do it. And then on set, there was like, you know, like a honey wagon trailer or something. Uh, I got straight A's, though, my whole okay. senior year. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Now, obviously, you know, Ted, you know, obviously expert, you know, horse rider. Did you learn to ride a horse prior to that or was it just for the show? If I remember correctly, they trained us for sure we definitely uh had horse riding lessons and i loved it i loved um uh, i loved being around the horses and riding them but uh, you know a lot of times my character would like fall off the horse into a pile of mud <laughs> i think there were some stunt doubles that would do the fall and then i'd be the one getting up out of the mud a lot of prat falls on that show right did you enjoy doing the physical comedy like that? Yeah, I do. You know, like John Ritter, you know, from Grease right. Company. And uh, uh, yeah, physical comedy to me is, it gets me every time. I love it. Yeah. Now, like your, you know, coworker and friend on the show, you know, Danny played by Joe Torres, kind of like has been laying low. Have you heard from him? You know, you know what he's doing these days? No, man, nobody knows where Joe Torres is. It's really weird, right? In 2024, that someone is unfindable. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. he was he's such a great guy. I don't I don't know. I, I we've uh, we've tried. We've tried to find him, you know, through everything, through social, through YouTube, through uh, Google, through everything. And uh he's off the grid. I I don't know where he is. Wow. <laughs> So I, I guess that could be your white whale for the show, right? Trying to get him on. Oh, my God. If someone can find him. You know, Josh Tigell, who played Buddy on the show, yeah, is like a private investigator. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah, I'd love to have him use his uh, resources to try and find Joe. Yeah. Yeah, that could be a whole, you know, you shoot it. You have him to try to, you know, interview people. You do a whole, like, you know, series about where in the world is Joe Torres? It, it, that would be a good little series, yeah. Yeah. Now, right around that time on Nickelodeon, I, I don't know if it started right after Hey Dude, but there was a show called 15, which was kind of like their version of 90210. It was set in school. I think it was shot in Canada, and it starred a very young Ryan Reynolds. I don't know if you remember that show. Uh, no, 15? I don't remember that. Oh, yeah. But yeah. we just had... um. We just had Chris Kirkpatrick on the, our podcast this week. Right. And he was talking about the Mickey Mouse Club. Yeah. And all the people that came out of that show. It's really like mind blowing how much talent they had on that Mickey Mouse Club. Oh, and that's like what Christina Aguilera, right? And Britney Spears. Christina, uh, Brittany, Ryan Gosling. Yeah. I I remember being I was a I was a guest on that show. I remember I think I was doing Blossom at the time and I flew to Orlando. And they, I think they'd have like celebrity guests every week. Yeah. And I, all those, I don't know, whoever cast that show should get like a lifetime achievement award. Oh, no, no doubt. Or, you know, walk on Hollywood Walk of Fame or so, something like that. Cause they know. Right. That. But a lot of, yeah, a lot of young talent came through Nickelodeon as well, for sure. I didn't know Ryan Gosling had, had a show. Yeah. Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. I'm sorry, Ryan, yeah. Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check. It. I mean, it's hard to find, but I think they have clips on YouTube. It's it's very cheesy, but it's 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 funny. It's 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 definitely you know, for the times. <laughs> I, right. And, yeah, made your mark in nighttime drama, and you had I guess a couple of roles on Nine Hundred Two One Zero with playing Kyle Connors mm -hmm. and three episodes, and you couldn't find more like hard-hitting topics at that point you know you're playing uh, an athlete who was like, dealing with their sexuality and at that point in the 90s no one was doing shows about that and um which was one of the summer shows and the beauty of 902 was like they were like one of the first show to like have like original first runs in the summer 
which really, I think, catapulted that show into another level. Yeah, I yeah, my episodes were during that first summer. I I think because nothing, you know, everything else was reruns, and nine hundred two one zero had this idea to uh, to air original episodes during the summer, and the show took off. I mean, of anything I've ever done. I've never felt that sort of like recognizability so quickly. And yeah, I I played a guy that was uh, questioning his sexuality at the time. It, it was like no one had really, no one was doing that. So the writers, I give them a lot of credit. I think they won some awards for that first episode I did. And yeah, then I was on the football team using steroids. I was like, they brought me on to do all the crazy social issues yeah. um but you know i listen i love i love jenny garth luke perry was a good friend jason i i love all and tori all of them right. i love all those people so much they were so welcoming and they were as big as you get for a few years there i mean cover of rolling stone and that show uh you know definitely made a mark and it's crazy to think how like the show originally started with like just the Walsh family, and then you fast forward I think ten years and none of them were on the show anymore, and it just dealt with the secondary characters and they were elevated. So it, it was kind of interesting. Like very few shows, you know, can survive with that. Well, because Shannon left the show, right? Yeah, Shannon left, and then you know the Walshes left, uh, and then uh, Jason Priestley left, and then it was just like you know. Ian Deering and Jenny Garth and you know Tori Spelling, they kind of like ran ran the show. Uh, you know, Luke, I Luke, I don't Luke remember. Perry, yeah, Luke Perry came back after being gone for a couple of years, so it was kind of like interesting. Yeah, we had Jason on our show, and he talked about how he was uh, he he directed a lot of them. Yeah. Um. And uh, and we had Jenny on, and Je you know Jenny also has, has a podcast with iHeart, so we see her at a lot of events. And Tori as well. When you were acting back in the 90s, was that something that you wanted to do, direct? I mean, we'll talk about Sister in a little bit, but was that something at that point you knew you wanted to get involved in? Yeah. I mean, I wish I had uh, negotiated some directing work in, you know, like at the, in Sabrina, I really should have done that. I, you know, Melissa did it. Beth Broderick did it. Um but for me, yes, directing for me was writing a very personal story about my family as a feature film and going to make something that, you know, no one else could make except for me. And um, and that was yeah, I mean, I don't that was my best way into into directing. I know that you said sister was a very personal story to you. Was it easy to write the screenplay? No, it was not easy. Um, I think it took like two years. But, you know, it dealt with my mother's mental illness, my younger sister's uh, misdiagnosis of all these disorders and her over-medication. It was like, but also tried to keep it real and funny and, you know, I... Uh, I had a guy named Reed Scott who played my character because by the time I had finished writing the screenplay, I was too old to play the role. You know, he really did, needed to be like mid thirties and kind of stuck in his life. But Reed Scott was unreal, unbelievable. Barbara Hershey played my mom. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm so, I'm very proud of that film. Yeah. And, and it's such a powerful film. I, re I recently watched it and there are a couple of actors who I always play a game where it's like you recognize them, but you don't know from where, and you really don't want to go on to like IMDb and say, Oh, that's where I know him from. So you try to right. spend like a couple hours thinking about it. And there are a couple actresses from that movie, who, one who played your wife, who I knew from, you know, a bunch of other things. And then Sarinda Swan. Yeah. yeah. Amazing actress. She's, Fantastic. you know, she's in the Marvel universe now. Yeah. Grace Kaufman, is, you know, the right. 12 year old is now an, an incredible actress. Right. And she, you know, landed uh, on a sitcom with Matt LeBlanc and. Um, right. 
yeah and then eventually i guess you can say her her teacher who was on my name is earl among other things so there are a lot of um a lot of talented people not to mention dan loria who played your father who was just fantastic oh dan loria from the wonder years yeah one of the greatest Ileana douglas right yeah i mean um and john hurd the late great john hurd who played the psychiatrist right now with all these talented actors was it kind of difficult to cast them like being a first-time director you know, I've my experience. I had a great casting director, this woman M- Emily Schweber. And once you have a go movie, and you have the financing, people show up, and 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 it has to be a good script. I think people responded to the story. Um, but yeah, I was amazed at the amount, the caliber of talent that showed up for us on a very small budget film. Was it difficult to get the funding for it? No, we did it uh, through a nonprofit because there's these uh, issues in the film. We wanted to raise awareness for uh, around ADHD and different um, um, different diagnoses that kids are getting and the medication they're being put on. So I had a friend named Warren who really believed in this issue. And he said, start a 501c3 and your investors are be, will become donors like uh, to try and get the word out on this message that the film carried. So I had some very close friends that will really put it together very quickly. Well, that's great. And I recommend everyone to watch it. I believe it's on Amazon Prime and I think Apple has it. Well. Yeah, Sister is on Prime Video. Yep. Yeah. And was it? A happy ending i mean i guess it's still ongoing with your personally with, with you and your family but is it everything going well in that regard yeah i mean it, there was art it's not a absolute true story it was kind of imagined okay. what if this happened what if that happened i mean i mean i'm happily married right you know my yeah. character in the movie is is in a different place than I was at the time but I did have to take custody of my youngest sister when my dad passed away and she's doing great now so yeah thank you for asking oh that's great that's great and you mentioned like you you couldn't play the role was there ever a part that you thought you might want to be take the lead role in that movie no I didn't I didn't play any role in sister no I didn't want to like bleed those lines you know I wanted to be the writer director and I didn't want anyone, I, I didn't care what I, anyone thought, but I didn't want people to think, oh, you look at him putting himself, you know, he wrote something so he can act in it. I really wanted to focus on the writing and the directing of it. Um, but I've done stuff since then where I put myself in it just to have fun. Right, yeah. But you did have your, your kids in that. And was that their first, uh, like, roles in movies? Oh, yeah. Well, Hannah played on the field hockey uh, scene. And Casey was in the Mexican restaurant scene. You know, they were just little yeah. background type stuff. You know, they're they're both off at college. They're not they're not in the entertainment business. And my youngest one, Chelsea, who actually is uh, in entertainment business, was too young. She was not in that movie. Did she come to you, you guys, and say this is something I wanted to do, like get get involved in the business? And how like responsive were you to that? No, it kind of happened organically. She had a babysitter named Jax who, you know, they're like sisters and they would do TikTok videos together. And then their videos would get a lot of views, like, I mean, crazy amount of views. And then uh, Jax became a huge pop star. You know, she's, I think on Atlantic Records, she wrote this Victoria's Secret song about Chelsea and something she was going through a couple of years ago. And she just had hit song after hit song. She brought Chelsea on tour with her for the Jingle Ball tour. She'd go on stage and perform that song with her. And um, and now Chelsea's, you know, it's like she does her YouTube channel. She does TikToks and she does it when she wants to. She 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 wants to start acting, but she's kind of turned down a lot of auditions. And I'm like, you know, whatever you want to do. She's just a regular kid. She's into her friends and school and sports soccer but 
she did say to me the other night that she wants to like start taking acting more seriously. So uh, whatever she whatever she wants to do, I'm supportive. You would know. I mean, like basically being in the business, like you know the pros and cons and what to watch out for. I did it. I really did it on my own. My I, like my mom wasn't driving me into the city right. to auditions. I was going myself. Um, but yeah, you see you see parents that push their kids into it, and it's that's not for me. Being obviously, you know, with the '90s, you know, so many shows that you know you did. Um, Blossom, you played, you know, Blossom's boyfriend Vinny for a few, se- few seasons. And did you get that right after Nine Hundred Two? I know. Yeah, yeah, I remember at the Blossom audition that Mayim had just seen the my Nine Hundred Two One Zero episodes, or so. she and Jenna were like very big 90210 fans i think i got blossom because of my 90210 okay. character because mayim was such a big fan of that show because you weren't supposed to be like a recurring character right or part of the main main show right i think you were just guest starring at one point and then- uh, on blossom yeah yeah i did one episode it was like the season two finale where I think Blossom runs away with me or something. And then I think the Monday, the taping was on a Friday. And then the next Monday, I got an offer for a three-year contract on the show. Yeah. And then like at that, you know, at that point, you know, going on auditions and pilots, I mean, that's got to be every actor's dreams. <laughs> get like a multi-year deal on a show. Yeah, you know, and I was so insecure. I'm like, I thought I was getting fired every day on that show. I, I didn't, you know, but yeah, the writers were amazing. Don Rio, who created the show, is the greatest guy. And Mayim, you know, we be just really connected, we became really good friends. We st- we're still good friends. We talk all the time. <clears throat> yeah, I, I saw you and Christina on our podcast, which was which is really good. Yeah, well, she she and Don are trying to get a, a reimagined Blossom uh, going again. Oh, okay, would they? Is there a place for you in the show? Yeah, they asked me if I would do it. I'm like, of course. It's a it's a, it's a, um, a single camera version of Blossom, not a sitcom. Okay, yeah. but uh, yeah, yeah. Of all the, the show, whole gang is ready to go. Yeah, oh, that's great. Now, of all the shows that get kind of rebooted, reimagined, is there one that you wish that you've done would get reimagined, rebooted? I think Blossom would be great to revisit. The writing was so good. And to do it as an hour, as a single camera show, um, you know, like that show, the, you know, her brother was a, an alcoholic and drug addict. And... uh it, it it had a lot of serious issues for a half hour comedy at the time. And plus having, you know, um, a young girl as the lead of a show that wasn't happening very often. So I'd love to revisit where those characters are. And then the Sabrina, you know, they Netflix did it uh, in a very dark kind of way. Um, this Chronicles of Sabrina or something. But I don't know. I don't know if Melissa and her mom Paula would want to revisit Sabrina as it as it existed as as a comedy. I think that would be really fun. Yeah, I agree. Now a lot of guest starring roles you had. You know, every basically '90s show, Full House, Life Goes On, uh, Step by Step, Two of a Kind. Was every set you went on? Was it? all like welcoming was there ever any bad experiences you've had on any of those shows um no we just had candace cameron on our podcast and we later after i did that full house that the full house episode i did was like my first job i think after hey dude and and i remember being terrified and they were so they were all such pros you know with stamos saget They, they were just they were great people, but they were, um, they were seasoned veterans, <laughs> and I felt terrified the entire time. And I told Candace that much uh, that I was so scared on that show. But, um, 
No, I mean, usually cast and crews are very welcoming to guest stars. That's what I found. That's great. And I actually worked with the Olsen Twins a little bit later, right? <laughs> Two of a kind. Yeah, I played their uncle Matt on a show called Two of a Kind for ABC. It only went one season. Um, but they were so cool. I mean, they, they, again, they were such seasoned veterans. They were only teenagers probably. And, and they just knew what they were doing since they, they've been doing it since they were literally infants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's crazy, crazy to think. And like they nailed like every scene they were in when they were infants too. It, it, were, it was amazing. Yeah. 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 You got yeah. it, dude. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now, auditioning, you know, like for pilots and stuff you didn't get, was there ever a particular actor you came across like, oh, I mean, he's here again? And it was just kind of like your so called nemesis that you always auditioned against? Hmm. I don't know. I it was just the same. Yeah, I don't want to name anybody, but right. yeah, it was a lot of the same faces yeah. for a couple decades. We'd all be in, you know, building 140 at Warner Brothers, sitting outside waiting to read for something. Um uh the the one job that I almost got, I read for the movie Clueless so many times. Okay. Um for the role that Paul Rudd and ended up getting and really got down to the wire. I mean, it was like so much down to the wire that after I didn't get the movie, Amy Herculine called me and said, will you do the TV show? Okay. So I, you know, and I didn't have to read for the TV show and, you know, Donald Faison and Elisa Donovan, everyone came back except for Alicia Silverstone. Right. Uh, so I think I did that show for two years, but, yeah, I mean, if there's one job that got away from me, it would have been the movie Clueless because it's such a classic, you know? Yeah. And it's funny because, like, both you and Paul Rudd are, like, just ageless. You, you know, it's it's crazy. You just don't look like you've aged a bit since then. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, he's cause he's such a great comedic actor. I'm such a huge fan of his. And uh, But, yeah, <laughs> I would have liked to have gotten that one. It was very close. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Now, was I know there was kind of like after Sabrina, you kind of went in a different direction. You, like you said, you went towards the directing. Was there a point where it's like you got typecast and it was kind of difficult to get roles? Yeah, I, you know, when I was in my 30s, I still looked young and I'd read for the dad or the cop or the lawyer and they'd always say oh he's he david looks too young even though i had i mean i i had kids and i was in my 30s so there was a time there where i was it was it got very difficult after 20 years of just breezing through and so that's when i said i got to start writing i got to start directing i need to you know do things that i can control do you still enjoy the acting I do. I started acting again like a year ago because, you know, there's all these, um, you do self tapes now, right? You don't have to drive yeah. all over the city to Fox or Warner brothers. And so, uh, yeah, I started acting. I got a role on the show, the other two okay. for max. It's a great show. It was nominated for an Emmy. So I flew back and forth to New York for a little bit for that. Then I got a show called, um, I think you should leave. And I had to turn it down because I was on my way to New York to promote the the launch of the podcast at their uh, Jingle Ball. Um, and then the strike happened. <laughs> I picked the wrong time to start acting again, <laughs> for yeah. sure. Um, but yeah, now I'm back at it. I got you know great representation that I love. Um, Corner Booth Management is amazing. And a guy named Roger Paul out of New York as an agent and... Um, so yeah, it's I'm I'm it's just another thing that I'm doing, but why not? Why not do it? And I guess now with doing the self tapes, you really don't know who you're competing against for the roles, right? 
No, you don't know. I listen. Uh, all these auditions, they have to offer uh, at least a live Zoom audition, which I have decided that I'm I'm requesting that every time. I want to see somebody right. and get their feedback and get notes from someone rather than self taping myself and just emailing it out into the universe. You don't know if anyone's seeing it. Um. But yeah, I miss in-person auditions. That would be great to have those back. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Plus, I mean, guess it just saves money, right? Doing everything on Zoom these days. Everything's on Zoom, especially in entertainment. I mean, there's very few. I was on the Paramount lot like a few weeks ago pitching a show. And there was like nobody there. There wasn't even like a receptionist in the building. Yeah, that's it's it was weird. weird. Yeah, because I, I was... I mean, I still work in, in, in the city, but like when the pandemic started, it was like a ghost town and it was yep. like really nuts. But look, luckily I was able to work from home for two years. So it's something in my field I wasn't able, you know, didn't even think I would be able to do. And it's just like, I mean, it's never a good time. to. Have what's your, job. what's your day job? I, I work, uh, I work in like in television, like behind the scenes. So like, for, oh. yeah, for News Nation, the, uh, the cable news network. But, uh, oh, cool! Yeah, I bounced around ESPN for like a decade, and like the baseball network and everything like that. So it's oh you know, great! Yeah, it's 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 been fun and nerve wracking at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like, there's never a good time to have a pandemic. But with all the technology that we have these days, like the zooms and obviously the FaceTimes, it like really, really was beneficial to have this technology now. Because we wouldn't have been able to like contact our like loved ones or just you know have like those reun those Zoom reunions every week and stuff like that, it would have been much more difficult to get through this pandemic. Yeah, I wonder was Zoom around before the pandemic or did Zoom get created because of? I th I think it started that. like before, but it just like catapulted you know during the pandemic. Which, yeah, which would have bought that stock right before. And sold it right. When Seriously, man, it's like it's a it's now a word in the English language. Yeah, I got a Zoom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like googling. You know, you're zooming. Yeah. Now, right. speaking of like technology and social media, are you kind of grateful that it wasn't around back in the nineties? Oh yeah, yeah. It's listen. I I think it's great in 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 keeping people connected. It's great for promoting work that you're doing. Um, but it's a huge distraction. I mean, I don't know. If I took all the hours that I've spent on Instagram and put them towards a more productive use of my time, I, mean, I can't imagine what I might have accomplished. But, you know, there's it's good and there's bad. But it's, you know, for the younger for younger people, I think it's there's a lot of negativity, not a lot of negative aspects to it. Yeah just having like interpersonal conversations with people it's it's difficult you know watching my daughter now who's like 14 and it's just like you want to be able to talk to your friends like you know face to face rather than just text them and when they all hang out they're all on their phones like have conversations you know like like we do when we are. yeah i don't want to like like preach like you know get off my lawn but you know it's it's a lot of skills like interpersonal skills you're losing out now as a result of like social media yeah, for sure. And though the comparisons, right? Like you're you're watching everybody's best moments and comparing yeah. your life to theirs. Right. You know, it's uh it's not a fair uh it's not fair to them because it's it, it creates a lot of FOMO and yeah. insecurity, I think. Yeah, I, I agree. And plus no one can read <clears throat> just with like a pencil or a pen on paper. Is everyone with text or just like, you know, emails or types. So it's like, I feel like anyone writing these days, it's like after like three sentences, their, their hand hurts because they can't write anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or they like, I know my like kids schools, they don't even teach like cursive a anymore. Oh yeah. That's yeah. No one writes in hand anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I had the worst handwriting anyway, so you know, it's I guess typing is is, is better than <laughs> better than that. Yeah, me too. Yeah, <laughs> but do you still like get back to uh, Scarsdale that often? Do you have any family still there? Um, my mom passed away 
in 2018, but uh, you know, uh, I used to go back all the time. And now my sister Lauren lives in Mamaroneck, okay, right near Scarsdale. So yeah, I go up there and see her and her boyfriend. Um, but uh, yeah, I, you know what? Actually, was it last summer? I got put on some wall of fame, like in Scarsdale High School, next to what was it? Uh, um, Aaron Sorkin. Oh wow. And some some astronaut. I don't know. They put me, and there was like a nice party to, you know, I guess for Scarzel alumni have, who have accomplished whatever. Right. So my picture is up there. So I went back for that. But yeah, I love Scarzel. It's a great place to grow up. Right. I think the most famous alum from my high school are Reginald L. Johnson, who was Carl Winslow, and um, on Family Matters. And, oh uh, no way oh yeah that guy's yeah. great and then <laughs> ron jeremy <laughs> oh, oh jesus yeah yeah so it's what? like you know, yeah <laughs> it's, where where what high school did you go to it was a uh, benjamin cardozo in uh queens so, oh, okay ron yeah. jeremy <laughs> yeah so it's, i didn't know that for the longest time i'm like oh god yeah that's it's pretty bad <laughs> yeah that's funny yeah but um yeah, David, I really appreciate this. This was fantastic. Um, everybody who can go, go to 90s Con in Hartford, Connecticut, March uh, 15th to the 17th. Basically, anyone you can think of from the 90s will be there. Um, big Hey Dude presence. I'm look, looking forward to that. And hopefully... Uh, yeah, I have a, the, my Hey Dude cast and my Sabrina cast. I'm going to be oh, going back and forth. You're going to be busy. Yeah, d definitely. Yeah. Is there any, anyone like you haven't seen in a while that you're kind of looking forward to like not like someone you worked with but just like someone like from the 90s who's going to be there that you're kind of interested in meeting i you know what one of my first jobs after hey dude was step by step also so yeah like stacy keenan and that whole group and uh i i have a lot of mutual friends with james vanderbeek okay he's going to be there yeah i don't know i'm just I'm psyched to see my Sabrina friends and my Hey Dude friends. And um, and if everybody could go check out our podcast called Hey Dude, the 90s called, wherever you get your podcasts, um, I think you'll enjoy it. Great. Well, like I said, I appreciate the time today and best of luck with everything. All right. Thank you so much, man. Nice to meet you. And a special thanks to you, David, for joining me today. Check out Hey Do the 90s Called. It is on all the podcast sites. And if you're in Hartford, Connecticut this weekend, check out 90s Con. Basically, everyone from the 90s will be there. And if you have a guest suggestion, hit me up on Twitter at the first no 019 or like the page Will Be My Youth on Facebook. You can go to iTunes, check out all the past episodes we've had. While you're there, please rate and view the show. Don't have iTunes? Not a problem. Shows on SoundCloud, Spotify, Podbean, Amazon Music basically where we can find a podcast a new episode comes out every week stay safe everybody we'll see you then